national uh, grid collapse or nas uh, national grid failures where it has been a consistent reoccurrence in the country. Also coming at a time when Nigerians continue to grapple with an ever-increasing tariff hike in uh, the cost of electricity, which analysts say has shot up by about 400% in the last eight months. We're currently being joined from our your studios now by, uh, from our from Abuja by Mr. Kunle uh, Kola Olubio, Olubio, who is the president, Nigeria Consumer Protection Network. Hello and good morning, Mr. Kunle. Are you on the line? Yeah, good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Morning Express. Thank you very much. Well, let's uh, quickly delve into matters. I believe I speak for a majority of Nigerians when I say Nigerians are not happy with the consistent power grid collapse, uh, especially when they continue to groan over the increase in tariff price. Well, thank, thank you very much. Like you, you have said, um, there is an increase in uh, tariff uh, uh, price, particularly the band segmentation of customers into band A, band B, and uh, what have you. But um, sadly, the, in, the increase in tariff price have not been measured with commensurate level of uh, improvement in service delivery. Uh, each band has um, some um, hours of supply attached to them and uh, sadly the customers or individual customers are not really getting uh, value for their money and uh, that's what I have to say on that. Now, now you're the president Nigeria Consumer Protection Network. Have you had Nigerians you know, reporting to your agency, especially in line with the current situation of electricity in the country. Come again. Your, your question is not specific. What, what kind of feedback are you talking about? Well, well, I'm talking about feedback in terms of the current, the current electricity situation, especially just recently when it was announced that there was a, a power grid collapse. It's not uh, the first time this is happening uh, through our BCA, have you had uh, Nigerians making formal complaints to uh, your organization? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of uh, system collapses uh, is uh, sadly has become part and parcel of the day-to-day -day operation of uh, the grid. And uh, it's one thing that in other same climb is unacceptable. Uh, in 2013, I was a member of the National Technical Investigative Panel on Power System Collapses. And 2013, to the best of my knowledge, is about 11 years ago. And the issues raised then and now still remain the same. For example, if you travel around um, the country, particularly the rainforest, you will discover that uh, the uh, transmission line, which is critical, like uh, a go between the generation and transmission, I mean distribution, supposed to be without any form of equivalences, particularly when it comes to vegetation encroachment on the grid. And as you speak now, a lot of our transmission line has trees, we're talking about vegetation, trees growing under them, competing for right of way. And when trees grow on that vegetation line, of course, it will create transient fault. When leaf touches vegetation line, the leaf will burn and it can make the line to, it can result in system instability. And so, a lot of money needs to be budgeted for uh, mechanized vegetation control. Yeah, that is being done genuinely by federal government, because if you go to the relevant uh, institution of government, the legislative arm of government, and multilateral finance window, budgets are being, uh, budget and funds are being budgeted for that, but uh, misplaced priority uh, diversion of funds and uh, misappropriation of funds and uh, so to say the vegetation control that is required is not getting the right attention. Another issue that is of significance to us is that system collapses usually occur when the three, the tripod, the generation, transmission and distribution 
they are not operating at equilibrium. If you generate XY uh, volume of uh, power supply, it is expected that the transmission leg of the grid will make, will peak, uh, I mean, uh, will uh, transmit or evacuate load at the same frequency or the same equilibrium with the generation level. And at the downstream where you have the disco, is equally expected that uh, the distribution uh, uh, subsector will not indulge in load rejection. So the recent system collapsed on Monday from my interaction before coming on air this morning could be attributed to loss of load, major load, between Bini, Oshobo, and uh, uh, the Jeba transmission leg of the grid. And these are critical components or critical major load that was lost. And when loads are lost like that, because of the radial system, when I say radial system, our transmission infrastructure is designed majorly in radial form. And so when there's a major load lost in any part of the country, it will push the load to any of the uh, system that is in operation. And what usually happens is you see that uh, everybody will have to be shut, shutting down their machine. Uh, but beyond that, uh, the issue of system collapses, system instability, or challenges of system reliability has got to do with some missing link in the system. For example, we have what we call under uh, frequency relays. The function of under frequency relay in a, in, in, in a grid system is to make sure that if they are effective, is to make sure that when there are challenges like this, it will detect the fault and trip up and shut down to ensure that uh, the areas affected to some extent are isolated. But as we speak to you now, one of the major challenges we have is that the essence of the on the frequency delay on the grid, some of these delay have been uh, 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 put in fault mode. Some have been removed because once it rains, once there's any signal as a system protection, the frequency delay will automatically switch off that particular area and detect the challenges that is there. But some of the operators have um, defaulted some of these systems to make sure that their, their customers get regular supply because uh, it's very sensitive to uh, system uh, distortion. What, what that area, another area which is a major concern is uh, what we call the spinning reserve. The spinning reserve is one thing that we have been talking about over the years. Procurement of spinning reserve, reserve procurement of skida. Skida uh, is a device that got to do with enhancing the automation of the grid. It takes records. It takes sequences of events on the grid. We don't have effective Skida in the system, which any in any same same uh, climb you cannot operate a grid without uh, a skidder and most of our system protection uh, scheme or devices that are supposed to be on the grid most of them are obsolete and we are paying lift services to investment in system uh, uh, protection so to say uh, we call it have what we call the back uh, black start equipment at the generation end upstream when the spinning reserve takes the uh, uh, any excess load or any load that is being generated to the grid the spinning reserve is like what you call the ups it helps in quick restoration of the grid some of these things are not uh, in place sadly in since monday to date the transmission company of Nigeria, they said the grid could allow them, but within some two hours, they've not been able to come out with what exactly is the major cause of the last system collapses, which speaks to the fact that a lot of things that were supposed to have in place, like I said, uh, the skidder, uh, the system protection, 
the sequences of records are not there. So we are operating manually. As we speak to you now, the TCM uh, folks are on their, on, on, uh, they are on their toes going around to collect some of this information manually. And another very important point is that nobody is being held accountable, particularly when there are negligences or human error. So there are lots that uh, we need to do uh, as a country. Uh, the issue is not the issue of funds particularly, but the issue is that the funds made available, are, are they being judiciously uh, utilized? Are they being properly channeled? Are there misappropriation of funds, you know, to places where uh, you say you have funds to take care of the boys? Uh, these are some of the challenges that government, where the government is ready, we need to look uh, look at, and we cannot exhaust in one single street. Now, now, now Mr. Mr. Kola, let's uh, talk about the effect of this recent uh, power grid collapse on businesses. Uh, we know that a lot of uh, Nigerian businesses sort of depend on power generated and distributed to them by the discos uh, to be able to run their businesses. Now, with this development, the only option that most businesses had in this uh, number of days that uh, the, the system was down was to resort to the use of generators and buying fuel at outrageous amounts. Uh, what adverse effects do you think that uh, businesses must have suffered uh, in line with this in the last uh, couple of days? Well, let me use a practical example. I took my daughter for resumption in a, in a, in a uh, boarding school yesterday, and I discovered that the school was in uh, darkness. No particular, you know, the, these are minors, no particular point from the staircase and what have you was littered up. And so, what that says is that if you go to the your station and the banks, the hospitals, the industries, nobody can afford to do any major production or productive activities without a stable and reliable power supply. That speaks to the issue of energy poverty. The debt of uh, energy deficit and this uh, with, apart from the system collapses, you will notice that even most of the major industries, the banks, and the sector involved in day-to-day -day production, in spite of the capacity of the grid, you know, base load, they are not usually on the grid. You cannot operate a bank or production line and industry with the national grid because of what we call the uh, uh, higher frequency of line tripping. What line trips? What line tripping means is that within an hour, if your line trips like ten times, that is not ideal. And if you are doing a production and your line trips like ten times, it's going to affect the overall output of production. It's either the production is module up or damage. So we have a lot of challenges, and the way forward. Uh, moving forward is to look at distributed uh, uh, mini grid to make sure that we, because we have advocated for decentralization of the transmission grid infrastructure into loop system, into regional hubs, but that is uh, is something that is work in progress. You know, the Nigerian factor will say we are on top of the situation. Yeah. And we can remain on top of the situation for 20 years to come. But as a way forward, we have 774 local government. I think we need to enhance the capacity of the institution that has been driving this, the Rural Education Agency, to make sure that, uh, like, uh, three days ago, I had an audience with the Minister of Niger Data Affairs and the MD Rural Education Agency. And if I don't have an audience with the CG Immigration and the Minister of Information, like the media subsector, like the MTA, Radio Nigeria, and most of these critical media stations, uh, you know, you cannot run uh, your live broadcast or media station where the grid is not even stable, it's not reliable. So that we need to look at putting uh, more money into off-grid that could be targeted at sector-specific. 
Look at the energized education. Look at the uh, teaching hospital. The federal government is providing upgrades uh, for the photic solar to make sure that the challenges of these grid collapses, the institutional decadence that we have, grid collapses is a failure of the system. And so we cannot continue to cry over splitted me. So the way forward now for industries yes. is for federal government to create a link between the industries to have access to funds. Funding is not about, uh, because energy takes a big chunk of the cost of production, the input of the cost of production. So federal government should do more with the rural education agency by making sure that that is what is done in China and other clients, by making sure that some of these uh, industries or SMEs have access to facilities. It may not be cash. It may be uh, solar uh, facility like uh, PV that they will pay over but you know what, one period of time. What, 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 so Mr. Mr. Kula, before, before you go on, you earlier made a about the federal government ensuring that they provide alternative means of energy off the grid other than yeah. just uh, you know the usual one that we know of now yeah. you, you also pointed out that solar panels or solar generated energy could be an alternative but when we talk of alternative energies most people just mention solar power how about other forms of energy that could be explored in ensuring that uh, electricity is brought to the common Nigerian at a very affordable rate so that the tariffs then continue to break the backs of Nigerians. Isn't coal a viable option to generate energy? Well, um, when solar is just, uh, I'm not even talking about solar panel because the capacity when you're talking about base load or industrial for high demanding or high, uh, higher level of consumption, we need to look at uh, energy mix and if you look at Nigeria if you want to uh, provide solution in terms of uh, off-grid or renewable energy for this different parts of the country have their area of comparative advantages there are areas where you have abundance of sun and so if you want to do an off-grid there you do solar there are areas that even when you want to deploy solar the radiation of sun uh, in that part of the country may not be as high as the northern uh, region. In the northern region, there are about, uh, if I'm correct, about 21 IPPs that signed commitment with uh, Nigerian Bulk Electricity, this uh, uh, trading company, to provide an uh, upgrade energy through upgrade. Uh, in uh, some part of the country, you have flow of uh, water all year round, that means a uh, river. Yes. So in that area, you may not necessarily deploy uh, um, a solar system, uh, uh, PV. So in different parts of the country, whatever that the federal government is going to deploy in form of off-grid will be based, there's, there's a country-specific report or studies that have been conducted uh, on Nigeria through UNIDO and other multilateral agencies. You know, Nigeria is part of the global community, uh, uh, committee of nations. Exactly. So any part of the country that we're going to do deployment of upgrade is going to be based on the uh, areas of comparative ad advantage so that we can link this to the clusters. Uh, the, it could be agro clusters, it could be industrial clusters. There are different parts of the country where agricultural products are being produced in mass but the the deficit of electricity is not giving them the opportunity from farm to gate and now to produce them and make sure that we reduce the losses in terms of uh, perishable items which could uh, could be improved upon where there's availability of uh, electricity it's a big challenge and uh, uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, Mr. President has uh, dropped the hint that he wants to do some cabinet reshuffling. He wants to do some reshuffling of his aid. Our appeal to Mr. President using this forum is to put the right people uh, in the right places. In the first two years, the government might have given consideration to appointment to balance uh, contribution of individuals politically. But this is a time to work. And so if we must get 
critical sectors of the economy to work beyond the present level of uh, its KPIs or performance, we need to rejig uh, the outlook of ministerial cabinet and uh, uh, presidential aides and make sure that uh, those who will not need tutorials, uh, those who will not need lectures to be able to articulate issues. Like, I was told that I'm going to be on air. I don't need to read any book or manuals. Wake me up from the dream. Wake so many of people up from the dream. It, it's all about passion. And so, we need to, Nigeria has the, 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 the areas of our best 11 that could be used in different sectors. And so, we need to play policies now and make sure that the system works. Now, if we must get it right with energy and other uh, set, critical sector well, begging for attention. Well, well Mr. Mr. Collar, you have uh, beautifully put it out there. Uh, if anybody who is uh, supposed to be at the helm of affairs uh, should ensure that uh, they are passionate, firstly, about you know the sector that they are going to be championing uh, to ensure that they bring out the best and deliver to Nigerians the best that they can. Now, before I let you go, uh, we have just about two, three minutes to wrap up this conversation. I know earlier you had hinted on uh, possible alternative means of generating energy. But with what we currently have with the discos, what do you think is a viable solution, a long-lasting solution to the energy problem bedeviling in the country? Also, do you think that perhaps Nigerians will see a better and maybe a less costlier tariff plan in the future, and, and in line with the, the different bands of uh, 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 electricity distribution that we currently have in the country? Well, um, let me start from the one that uh, directly affects my constituency, which is yourself, I, Mr. President, and what have you, which is about metering, yes. effective metering of the sector. Uh, the, we ask for liberalization and the regulation of the military uh, ecosystem because from our findings we discovered that the cost of meter on the shell overseas and the cost at which it's been delivered here is, is about three to five hundred percent increase so it's it's it's, it's now a picture of syndicated rent seeking. If you have a uh, regulator determining the price of uh, meter, but this is not good enough for the market. You can get meters for 40 US, US dollar, 100 US dollars, and you convert them. Three phase meter in Nigeria is the highest in the world. And at the level of tariff, at the level of fixing the prices of meters, when there are enough, uh, uh, what you call uh, overflow of resources, those meter service provider, MSP or vendors, will have enough to share land to those who are being paid public funds to protect us as institutions, as regulators. So we feel that beyond what the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission has done, customers should be able to buy meters from not from banana sellers but from certified accredited location take them to the distribution companies get them uh, reconfigured or linked to the system to the metering intelligence system and going back to the ground norm of the privatization the reason for privatizing this sector is because the investor said they are going to meet their customers in line with their service level agreement. So in the first place, procurement of transformers, procurement of line materials, that is conductors, procurement of meters is not the business of the customer. When you go to a grocery, when you go to petrol stations to buy fuel or buy um, protein, you don't provide the scale. You don't provide the metric. You only pay for the products. So when we pay for meters to help in energy accountability and cost recovery. The uh, licenses business is to reform us through energy token. The major concern about privatization is that the original agreement is that in 2013, when we, the sector was privatized, five years later, because we had 
a 10 year moratorium. There will be a midterm review, like in 2018. This was not done. In 2023, 10 years, there's supposed to be a review of the license. Now we've had the Electricity Act. Electricity has been moved from exclusively to concurrent lease. This has created distortion to the licenses and the monopoly of the distribution company. As we speak to you today, just maybe about two, three discos in uh, not on, on uh, light support scheme. The discos are technically insolvent. The first five years, eight years, the distribution company were viable. But because of weakness of regulation, of the regulatory uh, ecosystem, there was a lot of recklessness, profiteering, and rent seeking. Most of the money that were made, most of the discos are viable. But they've run into that because of loopholes and gaps. As we speak to you now, a lot of the distribution company cannot pay worker salary. They cannot invest in the improvement of the network. Their account is being escrowed because the indebtedness to CBN and intervention fund deliberately, a lot of them have refused to pay. They received money, they took loan from the bank. And they've not paid. There are discos that generate up to 10 billion in a month, 15 billion in a month, yet they did not dedicate a greater percentage of that to their uh, payment. So they were reckless in spending. And so moving forward now, federal government have to face the fact and step on toes. The, the, the privatization of the power sector in its present nomenclature cannot give us results. You will continue to increase tariff. In 2013, the country celebrated peak generation uh, load evacuated by distribution company of 5,800 megawatts. Between 5,000, I mean, about five, it was even less, 5,800 megawatts. Let me, fear to that. Let me be fair to that. Between 2013 to today, we've not been able to increase 200 megawatts. From 5,000, we've not been able to reach. 6,000 megawatts. So what a model is shameful. And so at the country, as long as, because the UN benchmark is 1,000 megawatts to 1 million population. And what it means is that only 6 million Nigerians have access to energy. Well, well Mr. Kunle, it appears that uh, we, well, fortunately, we still have about uh, 20, 25 minutes. So uh, most of those thoughts that you wanted to part pass across, uh, we have plenty of time for that. But let's uh, talk about smart solutions to energy in Nigeria. Uh, there is currently an energy summit uh, holding in Lagos, uh, an annual event which uh, a lot of industry experts and giants meet to profile solutions uh, on the way forward to some of the challenges bedeviling the energy sector in the country. Let me get your take on possible smart solutions uh, as the country continues to innovate, as the world continues to revolve around technology, AI, and the rest. What smart solutions do you think we can sort of uh, uh, plug into to ensure that uh, people get energy at affordable rates and seamlessly as well? Thank you very much. The backbone of the grid, like we have said, is gen uh, national grid, if we are looking at it from the grid uh, source energy. We need to look at the gaps in the generation. Like we have said, we raised in 2013 the issue of spinning reserve and blast start equipment, automatic governor, uh, I mean, AGC, governor control, and uh, in free mode and what have you. We have continued for the past 15 years to pay uh, leave service that has not been done. Uh, because you cannot do something or nothing. The transmission conductors, transmission towards distribution uh, um, uh, conductors, some of the distribution conductors, if you see them, they are quite appalling. They are either you have undersized. Uh, conductors or conductors that were designed for rural electrification. You know, those days, 
uh, before uh, federal government took over uh, some of the uh, network, some conductors were, if you have an average of uh, uh, 75 mm conductors or regular in a place, it has a load capacity supposed to carry. Now, in some communities, some of the conductors, uh, the Nebatu or, uh, or the parts that operate within the system, they will pull down conductor that's supposed to be 75 mm at the minimum and split them into three. And when you split conductors into three, of course, what you get is a uh, low supply of energy. And that will even raise issue of safety challenges because when a conductor that's supposed to be 75 is split into three and becomes 20 mm aluminum conductors, when it's overloaded, it could result in cable snap. So most of the network, before you bring in uh, issues of smart grid or grid automation, you need to do a lot of work on in terms of the conducting of the network and network reconfiguration. Because some loads are overstretched, there's a minimum threshold of uh, lines you're supposed to keep on a feeder. When the load is overstretched, you see that you see persistent line tripping. Yes. Well, well I, I, I'm with you, uh, Mr. Kola, I believe, if you can hear me. Oh, okay, okay. Before we do any form of uh, uh, smart uh, uh, grid, SCADA that I spoke about, presently we have Internet of Team, IoT. SCADA we talk about is part of grid automation. Smart metering that we allow the distribution company not necessarily have to go uh, around the customer. Once there's an energy tab, the smart metering allows the... Well, I believe we are having a little bit of a uh, challenge with... Okay. Uh, uh, well, well, Mr. Kunle, I, I think there is a little bit of a network glitch here, but if you can hear me, you were making a point. Hello, Mr. Kunle, can you hear us? Well, well while, while we look to uh, create a connection with Mr. Kunle to have, uh, to take us through uh, the, his thoughts that he was lending to the issue of energy in the country, uh, in, in a much, a highly anticipated uh, Nigeria Energy Summit, which uh, kicked off on Tuesday at the Landmark Center in Lagos. A uh, lot of innovations are currently going on. And of course, the Lagos state government is advocating for a decentralization of the power sector at uh, the energy summit. Now, much like Mr. Kunle has also pointed out, uh, he has uh, proffered solutions of off-grid uh, energy generation uh, possible in the country where people will not have to rely on the grid alone, which has had the potency of uh, continuous collapses in the past. Now, we look to have a broader uh, insight into this from uh, Mr. Kunle uh, Kola, who is uh, hoping to join us in a short while. Hello, Mr. Kunle, are you back on the line? Hello, are you back on the line? Well, I, well, we hope to uh, get this, uh, this uh, network issue sorted out in a short while. But uh, let's just take a breather. Right? In a few minutes, we'll be back to the studio uh, to continue this discussion on energy and the possible ways of proffering solutions to the challenges. Do well to stay with us. You're welcome back to Morning Express. Now to continue our discussion around uh, energy, this is energy situation in the country, the recent power grid collapse, and of course ways of uh, proffering sustainable solutions uh, to the problem. Uh, in our continuation of the discussion with Mr. Kunli Kola Olubio, who is uh, the president Nigeria Consumer Protection Network, is joining us back on the line now. Uh, hello, Mr. Kunle, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, fantastic. Uh, so moving ahead, um, a lot of analysts have uh, called out for reliable 
uh, clean energy sources, especially renewable energy, uh, for the industrial industrial drive in the country. Uh, citing that uh, if businesses have access to reliable energy, then businesses would continue to thrive and not suffer. But when we speak of clean, renewable and sustainable energy solutions, a lot of people might be thinking about solar energy, a lot of people might be thinking about, you know, carbon energy. But in your position as a professional, what uh, viable, clean energy sources can Nigerians explore, maybe not uh, nationally, but individually, even in their homes and their businesses? Well, thank you very much. The total platform of um, energy that is generated, whether grid and off grid, uh, determines the total national quantum of generation in any given nation. And so, we have all agreed that put all the monies in this world in the national grid like uh, you remember that immediate past administration and the Jonathan administration and the president administration put everything together nigeria have taken a uh, multilateral finance window funded uh, credit facility that is not less than 10 to 15 billion us dollars to invest in the grid. Uh, and this has not really given us the desired result. So it's like throwing uh, water into the basket. That is why the issue of investment in off-grid uh, energy needs becomes inevitable. Now, the way to go about it is uh, we have 774 local government in the country. Even if that is uh, similarly large. We have three senatorial districts or state. So the way to to approach it will be for federal government through uh, rural electrification agency. I'm talking about rural electrification agency because uh, if you want to take credit facility to invest and for government to uh, take the lead, you need an institution of government that could be backed with sovereign guarantee. Because if you want to get uh, funds from commercial uh, bank lending rate, it's over 20%, and that is not good for uh, return on investment. So each of the senatorial district by state, we should identify the clusters, industrial clusters, agro clusters, and link it up to the energy sources. There are different uh, energy sources that forms renewable energy and clean energy that you're talking about. So once we identified the area of comparative advantages of each of the central district, we could put in there one, two, three megawatts or 10 megawatts per senatorial district. By the time you put that into the total number of uh, so a senatorial district you have in the country, you will be rest assured that we, to a great extent, we reduce rural urban migration and, uh, and uh, upscale uh, energy security, upscale um, absorptive capacity for the uh, nation uh, to create employment for our team and youth. Because the grid, from my experience, put all the monies in this world. If you take put a load that is 6,000 6, megawatts, as the grid is constituted between 2013 to date, the grid will collapse. Because the grid does not have the capacity to even take more than 6,000 megawatts as we speak. Forget all the political megawatts of 13,000 installed capacity. We cannot evacuate or distribute more than 6,000 megawatts. If you try to do 6,000 megawatts, is it the grid will collapse. So as a nation with increasing population, 10, 15 years ago, our population was one and something million. Today we're talking about 220 million strong population. So we continue to increase in size without a commensurate 
growth in infrastructure, particularly energy. So the best way to go is that the Ministry of Power, Planning Research uh, and Statistics Department, and the relevant agencies, they've done um, 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 uh, studies of area of comparative advantages of each senatorial district and the kind of the renewable energy sources that we can deploy. So all that is required is for government to adopt a PPP approach, get investors, because if you put funds into pool, they are not like this. They are not like throwing away money. For it to work, we should bring in the private sector. And that is what uh, the mini grid uh, uh, model of rural education have been doing of late. So that the private sector, we invest in mini grid in a particular area, the rural education will do assessment of that mini grid and pay them uh, for the cost of the investment. Now, 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 now Mr. Mr. Kule, is, is this in line with uh, the calls made by uh, the Lagos State Commissioner for Energy and uh, Mineral Resources at uh, the Energy Summit being held in Lagos where um, you know, he called for a decentralization of the grid. Are you sharing the same thoughts in line with uh, uh, possible ways of ensuring that the grid is not overburdened? Well, I, I didn't listen to what the commissioner said so i can't speak on that but you know one of our area of strength is we have talk show talk show and sometimes to a great extent i uh, have always declined invitation to such talk show because it's talking talk 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 people do seminar they close out maybe as the christmas is approaching now we are in the we have about two months to go people are already doing talk show to get their share of uh, package for christmas and what have you we are talking productively here in this uh, engagement decentralization of the grid means that instead of having one single monolithic uh, grid we'll break the grid to regional hub where each region of the transmission or the national grid infrastructure decentralized into loop system we have supply and we have a tee off where they get their supply like in Guadalajara, we have 100 megawatts of a uh, photophotic uh, solar system not the solar panels that you have now that is like a concentrated form of solar generation supply could come from there supply could come from uh, a farm Supply could come from Osisioma in uh, Edo. Supply could come from Transcorp, but it will be linked to the loop and where and uh, concentrated on the generations that come from each region. Instead of having a single radio system where there are system collapses and the whole system uh, will be shut down. What we are talking about about encouraging the energy mix is that if there are different communities that have massive production of fish, of melon, agricultural products. But from farm to gate, there are usually losses because you don't have the type of electricity. There are places that have abundance of palm oil production. And if we want to look at the non-oil non sector, we should not just export our agricultural products abroad hook line and sinker and so we, we, should, we should find a way to to sort of yeah manufacture that is what the upgrade, upgrade uh, uh, sources we do and, yes and we break them down to senatorial districts so that there will be even development okay. and taking care of our local political sentiment okay well, well well go on mr mr Kola. yeah i'm there all right fantastic well in closing now uh let's uh also get your take you know, in, in terms of energy, we have been talking about electricity, uh, forgetting uh, another source of energy that uh, many Nigerians or every single Nigerian household uh, relies on, 
which is cooking gas. And we saw uh, a recent statement by the members of the House of Representatives asking the federal government to rethink its decision on the issue of, one, the four pound price hike, and secondly, the increasing hike in the price of cooking gas. Let's focus on cooking gas for a moment. How do you think that uh, perhaps Nigerians can explore better means of uh, accessing ways of energy generation for cooking? Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. The major problem we've had over the years, even when you called Baba Megeskia, the last regime that came and uh, uh, paraded itself as the embodiment of uh, integrity, honesty, and what have you, the major problem we have is, one, the June 12 crisis. I don't know if you are uh, around what the well, I'm aware of the June 12th crisis. Okay, and, uh, so you 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 are a big you are a big uh, you are a big boy then. <laughs> so some of us were involved in the in the trenches, Nadeko and advocacy, Yusuf Ali, and some of uh, what so to say. The June 12th crisis is one major uh, sad event that shut down the entire production line of our refinery. You know the Kokori and what have you. The production line was shut down, and so. Mechanically, most of these uh, refineries that are supposed to be running 247 for being shut down for three months, six months, some of their bearings, some of their equipment, up to now, we've not been able to bring them back on stream. Talking about the cooking gas, the OPEC benchmark before now, they gave us about 2 million megawatts target or 2.5. And if you look at, if not for the engagement of government, We've not been able to up our game up to 2 million barrels a day. Now, the gas abundance in the Niger Delta, in Imo, and other parts of Nigeria, the open benchmark entails that when we are exporting, 50% for export, 50% for domestic obligation. But what we've been doing is that all our production line including the one that's supposed to take care of the local economy, the domestic obligation of 50%. I mean, if you are producing gas and uh, crude oil uh, byproducts you want to refine, you export 50% and leave 50% for the local economy. Now, the NMPC as an institution have not been feared to Nigeria. Because for every export of a barrel of crude oil, there's a, product, there's a commission for whoever is the president, not vice president now, senate president, $10 below the brand or whatever that is fixed. So the NMPC, MD, or PPMC, they don't even have a say. They are only agent of whoever the president of the day. So we put a lot of our production line to export to increase the commission that will come to, that will be in uh, Switzerland or what have you, for whoever that is the president. That's now, now president the, 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 that this, is, this is an information that I believe... Uh, no, no, no I'm, uh, coming, I'm coming, okay. I'm saying a challenge, I, you know, I know, I, uh, I've had appearances, I'm coming, I've had appearances on over 500 appearances on different television, I'm speaking without fear of contradiction, we are speaking to issues. We are speaking to issues. The recent sales of oil oil block to uh, some oil company or and those blood, uh, in fairness to them, Ali Kodangote, the only way we've been able to achieve mass production and uh, uh, we have access to export is that some years ago, Nigeria was a net importer of uh, back cement, 50 kg cement. A federal government took a decision to say, look, as you are importing, you must establish industries there. That is what was described as backward integration. And that backward integration today, Nigeria is a net exporter of cement. And so for the oil and gas sector, you have gas in Egbema, which is being linked to AKK gas, uh, AKK gas pipeline to Morocco. We are trying to go and supply African countries. Most of the oil blocks that were sold to some company very recently should not, it should not be come with conditional president with the likes of Ali Kodangote that established a refinery, Buhari refinery, and those who are doing a uh, modular refinery. These are the people that are supposed to be giving this oil block. I'm not speaking to, for them. I've not met them. They are not supposed to give oil, oil blocks 
for some of these ma oil majors to oil exporters whose only business is to export. Let's even come to the issue of uh, metering uh, of the oil platform. As we speak to you, if not about three, four months ago that the Minister of State for Power had to raise concern. Most of our oil terminals, the metering there are permanently designed to be faulty. They are not working. So this, that is official bunkering. If you say we export one million barrels a day, you can be rest assured that we have exported three million barrels. Because if you don't have functional metering at the oil platform, the country is being shortchanged. And there, there, there is lack of transparency in the system as well. Yeah, yeah. So for us, some, a lot of our gas resources are being idle or wasting away in worry and what have you. Well, so it, well, Mr. Kulia, I'm afraid uh, in, in as much as we would want to take more of your thoughts uh, on this issue, uh, time would not permit us to do that because uh, it's the top of the hour. And well, my, to... my, 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 my parting note, my parting yes. note, my parting note is uh, the prices that is being given for pump price for uh, petrol is quite outrageous because the local refinery does not have. The, co the cost that is being incurred, like uh, cost of fight, uh, 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 you know, bureaucracy cost built to the cost of pump price. So if we allow Dangote to have access from, uh, to gas or uh, crude oil wells in Baeza or Imo, that should be a matter of national policy. If you establish refinery, you should equally be given an oil well or oil license. Uh, uh, all right. I don't need to beg for that. I don't know him, but Nigerians are being short because the 1,000 plus of pump price is, is, is over we, we hope to have you again on, on the program sometime yeah. soon to discuss this particular issue. You seem very passionate about it and we would love to have you. But I must thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kunle Kola, for finding the time to come and lend your thoughts and wealth of knowledge with us on Morning Express. Thank you so it's much. It's my pleasure and thank you for the good job you are doing in your studio. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, that's the much uh, time can permit us to take on this segment of Morning Express. For sports lovers, it is the top of the hour, and I'll be handing you over to our your studios for latest developments in the world of sports. Stick around. Morning Express continues.